Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome uh, once again to the NASA's Johnson Space Center here in Houston. Uh, mission status briefing today focuses on Discovery uh, flying on its own, which is a good thing, obviously. Uh, joining us today is Paul Dye. Uh, he was with us earlier in the mission. He is the lead uh, flight director for Discovery's uh, part of the STS-119 mission. Also joining us uh, today once again is Leroy Kane. He is the uh, deputy manager of the space shuttle program. He He's also the chair of the mission management team. And uh, we'll hear from both gentlemen, and then we'll take questions. With that, I'll turn it over to Paul. OK, thanks. Uh, it's great to be back uh, at the end of a very successful docked mission. Uh, we're wrapping things up on board Discovery uh, with pretty much a standard timeline here at the end, uh, working down towards, uh, towards entry. The uh, late inspection was being completed as I left the control center. We were working on that this morning. Uh, they've now looked at the starboard uh, port and uh, nose areas of the shuttle. That data is going to go to the engineering evaluation teams. They'll take a look at all that and make sure that, uh, that uh, everything looks as good as it did uh, at the end of flight day two uh, inspection, and uh, that should clear us for entry. Crew is uh, busy wrapping up the cabin, sto cabin stowage and tidying things up today. Tomorrow is uh, kind of a, um, a standard day before entry where they'll do flight control checkout and things like that. So uh, they like to get all finished up with, uh, with putting things away and they'll work on that. Um, I know everybody likes transfer numbers. Uh, now that the hatch is closed and we're undocked, it's easy to give those to you because nothing's changing. The total uh, transfer from the, uh, the uh, mid-deck of the shuttle to the ISS was 2,025 pounds. Uh, coming back from the ISS to the shuttle mid-deck was 1,963 pounds. And of course, I don't want to forget about that big uh, payload, bay do uh, payload bay transfer of 30,937 pounds for, uh, for S6. That was the big uh, transfer for the mission. We uh, sent some water across to the station. About 1,148, call it 1,150 pounds of uh, fresh water that we left, uh, supply water that we left on the station. Uh, we pumped up their nitrogen tanks uh, to the tune of about 26 pounds mass of, uh, of nitrogen. We didn't uh, transfer any oxygen. They didn't need any. The, ta the tanks were full, so we didn't do any of that. And uh, we were able to increase our stockpile of lithium hydroxide canisters. That's what uh, moves, removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We increased the stockpile on the station by four cans, and that's a significant amount that'll help us out uh, for future flights. So those, it's kind of uh, transfer by the numbers, and uh, I'm real happy with, uh, with the way the, the flight, the dock mission has gone. Leroy? Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, it is great to be with you again today. I don't know how many different ways we can say uh, how successful the mission has been or how many different uh, words we can use to describe that. Um, I do know that, that for our part, um, we, I think, uh, as an agency, as programs, as individuals, I think I speak for many of us in saying that we do feel a great sense of pride in these accomplishments, uh, mission by mission, stage by stage, um, significant milestone by milestone. It really, uh, it is pretty amazing when you look at the space station, the International Space Station, and, and look at what it represents. Um, a lot of folks have worked uh, a long, hard uh, time to get to this point, and, and our work is not done by any means. Um, but uh, again, uh, just great sense of pride and humility to be part of such uh, an incredible team and, and such an, an amazing accomplishment. So um, for our part specifically, uh, we, uh, of course, we're very satisfied with the docked mission. Um, we'll be more satisfied once we get uh, Discovery and our crew safely on the ground. And so that's what you're seeing here for the next couple of days is we're, uh, we're in the throes of the final um, portion of the mission here, preparing the vehicle and the crew and the uh, ground team to come home. So team is working on late inspection today. Uh, they just wrapped that up. Um, we'll have some results of that and, and we'll have an opportunity to review those in the mission management team um, tomorrow. Um, we, uh, we didn't have anything significant to talk about in the mission management team today. Um, the entry flight director brought in the, uh, the landing plan. And, uh, and it's very straightforward, and, uh, and we have lots of capability and uh, lots of opportunities here to get on the ground safely, and uh, so that's what the team is looking forward to now. So, um, and the mission, of course, is on Saturday, 
and uh, we'll be focusing on the Kennedy Space Center for that portion of it. Um, Richard uh, Jones, the entry flight director, will be here with you tomorrow. He can give you all the details on all the opportunities and, and exactly what his landing plan is. As I said, we approved that plan at the mission management team today. Uh, so in summary, we are extremely pleased um, with, the, with the mission, the, uh, the entire shuttle system, um, the orbiter on orbit uh, performance um, has just been excellent. The team performance has been uh, outstanding. Um, and uh, we have one big objective remaining and, and we'll focus on that here for the next couple of days and, and look forward to seeing Discovery and the crew on the ground. So with that, uh, I'll be happy to take any of your questions. Okay, we'll start right here with Frank once again. Frank, morning with, with Aviation Week. In, the, um, in what you've seen of the, the inspection so far, were there any areas of interest or can you characterize how it looked so far? Um, I'll let Paul answer uh, first. Uh, you know, to the untrained eye, uh, it looked very, very clean. And when I say untrained eye, I mean we've got a, a whole army of experts that, that look at these things incredibly close. Um, we didn't see anything obvious in the, in the flight control room, but then we're mostly concerned with getting all the data correct and on the tapes so that that can go to the folks to look at. Just to follow up for, for Leroy, is the, the landing strategy driven at all by the need to get those uh, biological samples down? I think it's in 125 hours. Um, not particularly. The, uh, the plan that the, that the team came up with for our timeline options, um, we were ba basically able to satisfy uh, the payload cold bag uh, constraints um, just as long as we had enough consumables to stay to stay for uh, an emission plus two kind of opportunity. So um, the plan that we came up with um, generically um, satisfies those constraints. And so uh, whichever site that we land at and whatever day uh, or opportunity we land on, we'll, we'll be in good shape as long as we're on the ground uh, within that EOM plus two timeframe. Gina Sinceri, ABC News for Leroy. We talked earlier, I think, about the satellite, the debris from the satellite collision over Siberia. Do you have any more word on that, that debris, and is it uh, of any concern to you? Uh, and as well as the, the potential launch by the North Koreans this weekend, is that something that enters into your discussions at all? The, uh, the, the satellite breakup and the debris, uh, I know that the, uh, the experts are continuing to look at the results of that. We get our standard periodic updates um, that are transmitted through our normal processes and our folks evaluate that data and, and send notification on to us if there are things that we need to be concerned or updated on from the last time we talked. In short, no, I'm not concerned about that uh, with respect to getting Discovery back on the ground here safely. Um, orbital debris is always a concern for us, so we, we will always look at it and, and evaluate it. And with respect to uh, launches by, uh, by other uh, countries out there, I don't, um, that's not of particular concern for us uh, as an agency or, or as it relates to our missions. Frank, do you have any follow-ups at all? Okay, I don't think we have any questions uh, at any of the other NASA centers, so I'll close uh, this brief uh, press conference with a couple of uh, notes. Crew heads to bed uh, just after 8 o'clock tonight, a little bit earlier as they uh, start setting up their circadians for landing. Uh, they'll wake up tomorrow morning at 4.13 a.m. Central Time. Uh, the uh, Flight Day 12 highlights airs uh, beginning at 9 tonight and will air on the hour throughout the crew sleep period as usual. And uh, our next mission status briefing in here will be with uh, Richard Jones, who is the SN Entry Flight Director, uh, at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, as uh, mentioned by Leroy. All of this is in the NASA television schedule, which we keep uh, updated uh, quite frequently. So you can look at that out there on the web and uh, uh, keep track of what's going on as Discovery closes in on the end of its mission. Uh, the Expedition 19 crew on its way to the International Space Station uh, this morning. Uh, that docking is Saturday morning and of course we'll have that coverage uh, uh, intermingled with uh, Discovery's uh, deorbit preparation activities as well. So with that we'll uh, toss it back to Mission Control and head back to space. Thanks.